long suffering gentleness good ness faith meekness and temper ants dot 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 okay hi anybody feeling convicted yet I um I want to just I want to talk to you and I want to preach on you too hard. You got preached that pretty good this morning. Amen. 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 I can't follow that, but I can. I tell you what I can do. I can share with you what I believe God's laid on my heart that'll help you, and what I would probably like to call practical Christian living. What I mean by that is the tools that you need that will help you to make application so that you just don't know the truth, but you can walk in the truth. You can live in the fruit of the Spirit. So that's, that's what I wanted to uh, share with you tonight. I want to look at Galatians chapter 5. We'll read what we pretty much just wrote down to you, and then I've got some other points to bring out in that chapter and probably others surrounding that. But are you in Galatians 5? Verse 19 reads like this, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And I want to just kind of stop there for a moment. I want you to recognize something as I shared with the class this morning. I'm going to reiterate a lot of that stuff so you guys can help me out. You can amen me beforehand if you like. All right. Thank you, girl. Listen, um, I, I want you to look at in, in Galatians chapter 5, Paul is addressing some issues. I think it was verse number 7, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, verse 7, I believe it is, where he says, um, you did run well. Who did hinder you? Uh, Paul has gone to these regions and he's talked, he's taught the gospel of Jesus Christ um, to uh, pagan unbelievers and, and, and created in their, um, in their midst uh, um, followers of Jesus Christ on the basis of salvation by grace through faith and not works, Amen. not the works of the law. Um, and he, he's telling them that it's, it's not by any righteousness or any righteous works that you can do, but it's by the righteous works of our Savior Jesus Christ that you become accepted in, in the Father's eyes. And so he shares that with them, and they come into faith in Jesus Christ. And man, they're, they're doing good. They're great Christian uh, soldiers for the Lord. They got a great church. Churches going on there in the in the um, the villages of Galatia, in the towns of Galatia, and and in that era, what we find is that somewhere along the way, someone plants seeds of doctrinal error, plants heresies, and begins to come in and teach falsehoods that takes the church away. So Paul says, he says, uh, you was doing good. Who has come in and hindered you? Who's taught you something differently? Now, once again, they were taught about salvation by grace through faith, that they are accepted in Jesus Christ on the basis of their faith in him and not on the basis of any works. But all of a sudden now, uh, they begin to want to practice um, legalism. 
They want to go back into under the law and start practicing legalism. And, uh, and, and so when you do that, let me just say to you, not, you may think, well, there's nothing wrong with the law and there's nothing wrong with living in, um, uh, under strict codes of, of moral conduct. Uh, let me tell you, you can't find your righteousness there. That's the problem with that. And, and so that's just as much in, into idolatry as if you go out and bow before a tree stump somewhere and worship that thing. You can't let anything come between you and your God, including your religion. Amen. Amen. You can't let anything come. And so here they were. They were doing well. Now, all of a sudden, what happens when they begin to slip back into the legalism, they become very uh, segmented and judgmental because you'll find later in the chapter there's a lot of backbiting going on. They're, they're biting and devouring, I believe is the terms he uses, one another. And, he, he, and, and Paul ex, expounds unto them that they should love one another and not bat and devour one another. So they, uh, that's what legalism does. Listen to me for a second. When there's problems in the church and people are at each other's throats, it's because somebody thinks that they have, are more righteous than somebody else. And they'll use the scriptures to back it up. They think. <laughs> Amen. They use the Bible for their, for their uh, platform. They'll, uh, they'll quote scriptures or misquote them, if you will. They'll, they'll twist them and rest them and make them fit their own purposes. And, and then say, that's why you ain't supposed to be in our church because you dirty. <laughs> they'll throw that on you. Paul said, you ran well. Who hindered you? I can't believe you've gone so far away. Verse 12, I think it is, he says to him, he says, I, I wish that they were even cut off that troubled you. I, I wish they had, I, I wish them to, to never have access to you again. I wish that, that you uh, could see the, the judgment of God fall on the people that have sown discord. Uh, you know, we, we, in our righteous indignation, in our judgment according to our own righteousness of the moral code, think that, the, that most of these things listed here are the worst things in the world you can do. But I'm going to tell you, the worst thing that you can do and what really turns God's stomach is when people begin to sow discord among the brethren. Amen? Amen? It's the absolute truth. Listen to me. Don't you put your hands to God's anointed. Don't you lay your fingers on the children of God. Don't you try to discourage or distract or take away or take or tear down a child of God. He said it'd be better for you that a millstone was tied about your neck and you were thrown into the midst of the sea than for you to offend one of those little ones. God loves his children. Don't you mess with them. I, you might be jealous or whatever your problem is of what's going on in their life, but don't you mess with them. You can't be with them, then get away from them. Don't mess with them. Don't you mess with them. Watch yourself. Don't put your hands on God's anointed people. Don't, don't mess with that. And boy, I tell you what, it becomes a very a dangerous situation when, uh, when people are leaving the confines of walking or doing well, running well, I think as verse 7 says. And he says, who hindered you? I wish they were cut off. Those that troubled you. In verse 13, he says, listen, this is what I want you to know. Yeah, you've been set free by liberty. You've been set free from the bondage of what the law held you into. But I want you to notice something, that what we find in this, and I think I've shared this so many times with you, but I'm going to go one more time. What we have is Christ has come kind of in the middle of everything. He's not in the um, extreme left of the people who thinks they can worship everything that crawls and flies. And he's also not in the, those who are the conservative right who thinks that everything is evil and you have to stay by some kind of rules or, of domination. He, he is neither this nor that. He is by himself alone separated from the laws of morality and from the, uh, from the guilt of the immoralities of this world. It's Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Amen. And that's the center road that we're talking about. Now, in that center road, here's where I'm at. Paul says, you got liberty. You were set free from the bondage of trying to live by the rules of the law. Somebody's trying to take you back underneath that bondage. He says, 
Uh, you are set free from that. Don't go back under that bondage. But he also says to them, be careful that you don't let your liberty be used to fulfill the lust of your flesh either. Christian people, listen to me for a second. Uh, I understand and know that I'm saved by grace through faith and it's not by works of righteousness which I have done. But don't you get so loose that you live loose. Amen. Don't you get so set free that you think you don't answer to nobody. Amen. Amen. Don't you get so far out that you think there ain't nothing that's wrong with anything. Amen. That's not so. Amen. That's not so. In fact, I want to tell you, you've been set free from the bondage of the law that you might serve as a bond servant our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, willingly. That's what you were set free from. You were set free from the slavery of sin that you may serve the righteous and living God. That's what happened. Not so you could go and serve your own flesh, but you've been set free that you might serve the righteous and the living God. Okay, any questions so far? Thank you. All right, here we go. Here we go. When we look at verse 19, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest. And when we talk about your flesh, we're talking about the fallen part, the fallen nature of man, the part of you that is unclean and, and unworthy, the, the, the sin nature of you. What happened to Adam in the garden, that's what we're talking about. That, that inevitable um, um, nature that's in the heart of every, uh, in the soul, I should say, of every man uh, that causes you to want to rebel against God. That's what we're talking about. That's the, that's the flesh. And it says the works of the flesh, the works of the fallen nature of man are manifest. Now, it, it doesn't say it's sometimes. I'm going to tell you that every single time that you follow after your fallen nature, uh, these works will manifest themselves. Amen. Every single time. Every single time. It's like when you put all the ingredients in, you get the same cake every time. This, I'm talking every single... Since the flesh is a fallen creature, every time you walk after the flesh and fulfill the lust of the flesh, this is what you get here in this category. And he says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. The word manifest means, Bill, what did you say this morning? Evident. It's, and I like the term evidence, like we're in a court of law. This his becomes the evidence. This is, uh, it, uh, manifest can also mean made clearly known or clearly visible. Uh, to be, uh, to be um, uh, made uh, evident, as Brother Bill just said. And the idea that these are the evidences of someone who's walking after their own flesh. And that's every single time. Now, this I want to stop for a second because it's going to be practical tonight. Not a whole lot of doctrinal, a whole lot of practicality. I want you to look at this for a second. Adultery and fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Uh, lasciviousness is just a term that um, means like unbridled passion. I was reading one commentary who said it's, it's acting like an animal. Um, uh, lasciviousness, uncleanness, this means uh, all type of filthiness. You, you ever meet people that are just like filthy individuals? I'm not talking about they don't take a bath. I'm talking about they're filthy on the inside. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I, I've been around those kind of folks. Lasciviousness, uh, unbridled passion, idolatry. That means worshiping anything before a true and a living God. Anything before a true and a living God. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Now that, uh, that's a, 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 a bit of sorcery. I, I think the word for that is uh, pharma hudawa. Yeah, so I don't remember. Pharma hood or something. It's where we get pharmaceutical out of. And it's the idea, I, wanted, I shared with the folks this morning, it's the idea of being able to manipulate somebody. Uh, it's it's uh, being under the influence, being able to influence folks and have them to do what you want. That's what witchcraft is really all about uh, and having some type of uh, other control. Hatred. Uh, folks that are just, that, that says it for itself, just mean. Um, variants, uh, folks that are always at, at odds and trying to um, circumvent everything that's ever done. There's some people that if you make a rule, they're going to try to get around it. I don't care. You, you as a police officer, I, so some folks, it don't matter what in the world, Dave. Uh, amen? It don't matter. They're going to say, well, that, that law ain't right here or something. They're going to try to circumvent it somehow. Uh, they're at variance with everything and everybody. Emulations. Um, I forget what that is. Um, 
What did you say? Jealousies. Thank you. You're right. That's exactly what that was. Emulations are jealousies. Uh, wrath, those folks that are just full of, of fury. Absolutely full of fury. Uh, strife, folks that just uh, are all about the conflict. Seditions. Uh, yeah, amen. Uh, seditions, people that are all the time uh, undermining relationships and people. Heresies. Those folks who love to insert their own forms of doctrine and like to break down the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Folks that absolutely cause you to go a different direction than what the Word of God does. Envyings. Envyings. Also coming like under a form of, of jealousy, I guess. And what does your, say, your note say, anybody? Envyings, uh, where you have um, jealousies. Okay, envyings. When murders... Uh, you're going to be amazed at this one. That means killing people. <laughs> Listen, not, not only does it mean killing them physically, Jesus, Jesus said if you hate your brother, amen, in your heart, uh, drunkenness. Uh, this is uh, folks who come under uh, influences of, of, of mind-altering um, um, substances. Um, uh, th these things where they give themselves over... Uh, to uh, be controlled by something else. Listen, we're supposed to be spirit controlled. Amen. Not alcohol controlled. Amen. Not drug controlled. Right. Amen. Not some other spirit controlled. We're supposed to be Holy Spirit controlled. And, and revelings. What was revelings? Carousing. carousing. What's carousing? That's when you get to have all the horses into the same pen. <laughs> Practical. Practical for just a second. Some of these things, listen, this is what I want you to do. Think about this for a second. Recognizing these things in your life. I want to say to you this. What I've already mentioned is that these are constantly, every single time, the works of the flesh. When you follow after the flesh, if we was to back up a couple verses, maybe verse 17, I'm not sure, somewhere in that area, it'll say, um, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Is that about right somewhere in there? 17, yeah, walk in, the, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Every time you walk in the flesh, this is what's produced in your life. Some or all of these things. Now listen to me for a second. Somebody that's tied up in adultery or fornication or uncleanness or deceiving, somebody that this ain't what their problem is. Drunkenness is not your problem. These are indicators that you got a problem. This tells you that there's something wrong in your life. Follow me for just a second. I know, I'm, I'm gonna raise some eyebrows, I know, but that's okay, I'm all right with that. Listen, Paul's writing this to the churches at Galatia. He's talking to the brethren whom he said did run well, but got detracted by somebody, got sidetracked by somebody. So I'm telling you, he's writing it to people who very well are spirit-filled individuals who are born again believers. These things can show up in your life at any time and every time that you start walking after the flesh. Can you hear me out there okay? Every single time. I'm talking to believers. I ain't telling you to judge your neighbor. I'm telling you these are indicators. You have a choice to walk after the flesh or after the spirit and you can't do both at the same time. Okay, now that we got that clear. I shared with them this morning. It's, to me, when I think of these being indicators, it helps me a whole lot. Because what people try to do sometimes, whenever they've got a problem maybe with uh, idolatry or hatred, they try to fix this problem. And this ain't their problem. Amen? And so they go from hating one person to the next. Have you ever, have you ever tried to get in and help somebody when they were having a feud one with the other and you stepped in between them? Exactly. Amen? The Bible says it's like taking a dog by the ears. Once you get in there, you can't let go or they'll both eat you alive. It's absolutely crazy because, listen, their hatred has, it wasn't the problem they had hatred one for another. They're just filled with rage. And whatever target happens to be in front of them, oh boy, they're like a mad bulldog. 
And you better watch out. So the real problem is not the fact that they're having issues with the brother. And we think it's, well, the sister has this too with this sister, so I'm going to go in there and fix them. No, you ain't. You're fixing to get all eat up. Amen. You're fixing to get something. You're fixing to grab a hold of something you wish you could put down. And you can't do it. Because their problem is deeper than what you think it is on the surface. And it can't be fixed with your psychology. It has to be dealt with on a spiritual level because their problem is they're following after the flesh and the lust of the flesh instead of following after the spirit. So these things show up in their lives. Indicators. I said to the class this morning, I say to you, I think of these things like dummy lights on your dash of your car. You know, the light starts flashing, beep, beep, beeping on and off. I mean, when the oil light starts coming on and off and on and off, Oh, I wish Frank was here. When the oil light is going off and on, off and on, off and on, when it comes on solid, bless God, you know what you need to do? Yeah, you need to pull over to the side and stop. Amen? Don't beat the dash and say, stupid light, stupid light. You're not going to fix your problem addressing the indicator. Amen. Or keeping going, say, well, you know, it's just a light. Everybody has a light on anymore. Right. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I'm telling you. Everybody. <laughs> we wasn't going to go with the gas gauge. <laughs> I'll be back. I got to go repent. <laughs> yeah, the gas gauge. It's the same thing. It's the truth. It's the absolute truth. You can blame it on the indicator. You can try to fix it by ignoring the indicator. You can blame the indicator on something else. But the truth is you better stop and raise the hood. Better yet, you probably need to take it to somebody what knows they look at what they're looking at when they do raise the hood. Amen. 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 Yeah, listen, it's important that you understand these things. So when you see this type of stuff, and this is what I wanted you to do. I wanted you to look at it and say, wait a minute, brother, buddy. I, I, I do some of that stuff. I know why. Following after the flesh. You're fulfilling your own lust. You're not walking after the spirit. You're not walking in the power of full, committed, spirit-filled living. That's what God's plan is for you. Brother Godson told us this morning, that's what God wants to do with us. When you get into the spout of where the glory comes out, when you get into the center of the will of God and are led by the Spirit of God in everything that you do, I'm, I'm telling you, God wants to raise you up and magnify you to all the world. Because that's what comes out of you then, love and joy and peace. You know what these are? These are attributes of God, not of you. These are attributes of God that shine forth through you to others. That's what we're talking about. We see these types of things pop up in our lives. So all these things are really indicators of which, which one we're following after. Are we walking after our own flesh? Which, by the way, is that fallen nature, that fallen part of man that is always headed for sin then if that's what you're doing, these is what's showing up. So listen, you may not know, you may say, Brother Buddy, I don't know how if I'm following after my flesh or not. Take a look down here and see. Just look down here. Are you always angry? Are you always stirring up? Can you, can, you can't stand it sometimes when God does something good for somebody else or somebody else is getting along well. I mean, are any of these things, is there, is, are you constantly trying to stir it? Is there strife that's just naturally about you? I mean, you, listen, is there, is, is these things showing up in your life? Then you can say, well, wait a minute, bless God. He's talking about me, therefore I ain't going to. You're walking in these things. These are indicators. You can blame the light. You can blame the indicator on somebody else if you want to. You can say the preacher's out of his mind. You can say the Bible don't know what it's talking about. You can say God doesn't know me. And you can go your own way if you want to, but then ain't gonna turn the light off on your dash. You still got the problem. And it's rooted deeper than the dash. It's down deep in the core of your soul. The indicator's on. 
these things, if they're evidencing themselves in your life, then I can tell you right now, you, can, you might say, well, brother, buddy, I hope and pray that if you see some of those things, you go like, Pastor, <laughs> I got five, six of them things. I need to get right with God. That's exactly what you need to do. You need to trust God. You might say, what do I do, preacher? What do I do? I tell you right now that you need to forsake your way and seek God with all your heart. I'm talking to believers today. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to reach out beyond the walls of this church and, and have you try to second guess what your neighbor's got going on. I'm talking to believers, folks who profess themselves to be Christians. One of the problems today with our world that we live in is we ain't got no genuine, born-again, spirit-filled, walking in the spirit children of God showing all the fruits of the spirit. We got a bunch of folks that's following after the flesh going out trying to witness to somebody when they see, hey man, I live better than he does. I got a better life going on than he does, man. I hear him cussing his wife and kicking the dog or kicking the wife and cursing the dog. I, I know what's going on in that, I know what's going on in that man's home. I see it all the time. I know what he's like. Then you go try to witness to them. Who do you think you're fooling? Even the world knows you ain't walking the right path. That's why you have such trouble trying to witness to them. What this world needs, somebody that's going to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. The, the attributes of a living God. Now listen, this is what I want to share. This is the whole thing I wanted to share with you, and I can wrap her up probably another half hour. <laughs> this is what I want to share with you. If this is where you're living, the only way, the only way that you have to get from here to over here, you got to take it to the mechanic. Amen. You can't fix it on your own. It's as much too big for you. You have to come to a place of submission and surrender. Let me tell you that one more time. You have to come to a place of submission and surrender. This is what I've discovered, and this is, talk about practical Christian living. This is what I've gotten from my own personal life. When I recognize one of these things in my life, first thing I got to do is I got to call it what it is. A spade a spade, remember? I got to call it what it is. I can't just think, well, I'm just having some issues. Your issues are more than likely sin problems in your life. You can't just say I got issues. You got to call it what it is. You'll never deal with it till you call it what it is. I'll never take the car to the man to have the engine rebuilt till I acknowledge that the rings are blown. If I keep saying, well, it's just a rod knocking. I'll pour some more STP in it and go. You know what I'm saying? I'll keep putting some kind of additive in it to try to quieten it down. I'll try to tell everybody in the world, there's nothing really wrong with the engine. I'll just keep putting a little more stuff in it to try to quiet it down. All the while in my heart knowing that the engine's blown. Amen. But if I don't acknowledge the engine's blown, I'll never stop and try to get a guy to rebuild it for me. Right. You got to get honest before God. And you got to get honest with yourself. That's probably the toughest part. And you got to take it before God and you got to call it what it is. Say, God, you know what? I got a spirit of hatred. I've got a spirit of emulation in me. I need for you to forgive me. And I need for you to cleanse me. I recognize that the reason that I have issues with brother so and so or sister so and so or the mailman is because my spirit. I'm following after the wrong path, I'm walking after the flesh. I'm not trusting God in my life. I'm trying to get what I want. I'm trying to fulfill my own lust, my own way. God, I acknowledge that today and I repent of that. I ask you, God, to forgive me and help me to walk in the Spirit of God. Now, the reason I share that with you is because of this. People that walk in this side over here are not normal. They just ain't normal. Amen. I'm just telling you the truth. When you see folks that love everybody, all the time full of joy, you keep thinking, what are they so happy about? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Long suffering, you know those folks that just have all kind of patience? Man, don't you hate them kind of folks? 
You know, when you're sitting there blowing the horn and they're going like, wonder why he's up. You know? <laughs> These people ain't normal. Uh, we think we walk in the spirit, but I, I, would, I would say to you that primarily, most of the time, you don't see a whole lot of these things manifested in the average Christian's life. It's just the truth. They may show glimpses every now and then. And they may have one or two coming out pretty good, but I'm just telling you, uh, to find somebody walking after the spirit of God, I'm, I'm telling you, this is not an easy road. Because to walk this road requires you got to deny this road. You got to say no to yourself every day, all day. Amen. It's the absolute truth. I don't know if this gets simple enough for you, but I'm trying to get it as practical as I can. How do I get over here, brother buddy? How do I walk after the Spirit? I'm going to tell you, you got to say no to the things you want and only say, God, I only want to do what you say. <laughs> My wife, I'm, I was telling my wife, I don't tell you when, but I, I was telling my wife sometime prior to today, I was telling her, she was saying, you want to do this? I said, I don't want to do anything right now until my attitude gets better. <laughs> I'll be on, I'm just as honest as I can be, didn't I? I said, I, actually, I think I used mood till my mood gets better. I meant attitude. I was, in a, I was just in not a good way. I, don't look at me like that. I know... I can hear that tone of voice in your eyeballs. <laughs> yes, I get irritated. I, 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 every now and then something up there over on this side pops up in me. And I recognized it. I knew it. And I told her, I said, man, I, I don't want to do that. And right now I'm just blah, 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 blah. You know? I just. <laughs> and, and I recognized and knew that the reason that I was in that state was because I had, I had let my flesh get offended somehow. I'm just telling you the absolute truth, guys. And I hate to admit that. It hurts me like anything to admit to you that that happens to me, but it happens to me. It happens to me. And I got to tell you that the only way that I can get out of this into this is to call it what it is and say, God, forgive me for that. Help me. Help me not to be offended or offensive or angered or upset or in strife or wrath with anybody over anything. It's not about me. It's not my battle. It's your battle. And I, and I sometimes go around with, man, just swinging my old flesh around. And I got a bunch of it. Like I want to get my way about everything. So to walk in the spirit is not quite as easy as I would like to maybe make you think. Amen. But it's well worth it. Yes, sir. Amen. What a journey it is. Amen. And when you get on that road, all the glory yeah. that awaits. Can, let me just, I, I shared a bunch with this over here. I want to talk about this side for a second. When you get to where you're walking in the spirit and just the attitude of love that comes out of you you might think, well, brother, buddy, if you love everybody, they just take advantage of you and mess you all up. Listen to me. When you love, really love everybody, they can't take advantage of you. Because your love is absolutely unconditional toward them. You love them regardless. Oh, my goodness. And they hate that, by the way, because they want you to get mad at them. But you love them anyway. And oh, my goodness, what a joy that is. When you can love that way, this part of the life starts to be fun then. You begin to experience the attributes of God flowing through you. Man, you lay your head down at night and there's such peace. You're not worried about tomorrow. You're not worried about what happened today. You lay your head down at night. You, go, you, you, you come across somebody you had not seen in a while. You're not worried about what was the last thing you said to them. Or whether or not you have to go to the other side of the street. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, you, there's just such peace about it. There's such joy in seeing folks and, and running into people. Uh, there's such gentleness and goodness out of you, your, your, the patience that you have, your faith. You mean, listen, this word here, self-control. Being able to have some temperance about you, some, you some, being able to say no to yourself and being able to, uh, to, to walk in the paths of righteousness, not because you're bound to it, but because it's your desire to walk after the Spirit of God. 
and you can say no to the flesh. Amen. Believers tonight I'm talking to, amen? You're, all, you're here, right? All believers tonight, amen? I'm talking to believers, and I'm talking to you about how to have victory in your life. Amen. How to have victory. When I read through these scriptures, and I've read them ever since I've been alive, um, you know, we read through the list that Paul took time to write down. Like it's just, there was no, no thought put into it. Like he just decided to write a bunch of stuff. But I believe that every word of God is wholly inspired by the spirit of a living God. God listed these things out for us for the purpose that we can have indicators in our lives. Don't wait till both panels of lights are lit up on your dash. You see one of them begin to flash a little bit. Why don't you check it out? Why don't you stop right then and say, Oh, Lord, I sense in my spirit something ain't right. And usually it will happen with those closest to you. Husbands and wives or children. Man, especially children. Oh, man, it's easy. The children catch it from us, don't they? Man, we go, I get my body. Oh, man, you can get all sideways with the kids in a hurry. That light's going off, man. Why don't you back up for a second? I, you know what we want to do? I want to blame it on the kid. Or I want to blame it on the wife. It ain't got nothing to do with them. There's something in me that needs to be checked out. Something in me needs to be. For example, that gas gauge y'all mentioned earlier. I wanted to blame it on the gauge. In fact, I still would like to blame it on the gauge. It's a stupid gauge. I think said I still had some gas in it. But I know that light had come on already and said, you need to stop somewhere. And I said, when the light comes on, that means you got 30 more miles. I remember that. I remember thinking that. Light comes on, that means 30 more miles. I'm going to Dunn and Lim Turner and gas up at the Shell Station. I didn't get over to Danes Point Bridge good before it started going... <laughs> Coming down the other side, it straightened up. I said, oh, that was just a fake. It faking me out. So coming down the bridge, instead of getting off at Hexer Drive and gassing up at the gate station, I come back up over Hexer. And it went, Koo. And when I come down the other side, it went, Koo. Stupid gauge. Stupid gauge. Tank was empty and I was beating the gauge. Isn't that dumb? I, st I should have been able to go, you think? I'm glad y'all getting such pleasure out of that. Should be able to go. The gauge told me and I wouldn't pay attention. Fortunately, that was an easy fix compared to what goes on with our souls. I called Brother James and he brought me a gallon, a couple gallons of gas. I was able to get back on the road again. When these things start flashing, don't wait till the whole panel lights up. When you sense that something's going wrong, why don't you check it out? It's much easier to fix it now than later. I know you want to walk with him. I know this is where you want to get to. But you can't get to here until you deny here. You got to go through here to get to here. You got to walk away from this to get to this. You can't hold on to this and walk here too. You got to turn away. That's why verse 17 says, if you walk in the spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Victory over the flesh is by walking in the spirit. Amen. And when you do that, it produces the fruit of the Spirit that you see on the right-hand side there. God bless you and thank you for being here tonight. I pray that tonight that something was said or done that helps you to remember, helps you to remember that whenever your attitude gets off just a little bit, whenever your, when your spiritual indicators are telling you that there's something not right, when they begin to show up, listen, you can put this list on your fridge. Well, you might not want to put it on your refrigerator. The kids will wonder what's going on. 
You, you, you take and remember as you flip back into the Word of God to, to look at this list and, and, and write out the definitions of these words that you don't understand and, and say, Lord, help me to, to see when I begin to step into these areas so that I can step back to where I need to be. Help me. Because it's a daily struggle. There's not an individual in this building tonight that's been saved for any amount of time that don't understand that. It's a daily battle. And the moment, that you, the moment that you become complacent with that is the very moment it'll eat your lunch. That's when you'll become the victim instead of the victor. I'm telling you, don't ever let your guard down and think you got it all figured out and everybody else is just floundering around. Every single day, you better keep your vigilance. Stay on guard. Stay on guard and make sure that you watch, not your neighbor, yourself. Listen, by the way, you can't change what they do anyway. All you can do is just take care of where you're at. Amen. Amen. Uh, I pray, Father, tonight as we come before you, Lord, it's our greatest desire that we would be able to minister to your people. Because the truth is, God, that we start out running well. But somewhere along the road, Lord, we, we began to think that it's about something else. Lord, we began to let the indicators of our life go crazy. and We don't trust them. We don't, we don't necessarily put a lot of confidence in the fact that what the Word of God says, that if these things are in your life, it's an indication that you're walking after the flesh and not after the Spirit. So we kind of wipe that away. God, help us tonight not to do that anymore. Help us to...